Hey guys, and welcome back to class. Even though we're doing distance learning now, it's gonna be a little bit different, so I wanna set it up for us so that we understand how to go about the next couple of weeks. Each week is gonna look similar to what we're gonna to outline today. It's just the story is gonna be different and some of the activities may be different. So the first thing that I want us to do is to go over our standards that we are going to address through this week and what we're reading this week. So the first one is to analyze the interactions between individuals and ideas in a text. For example, how ideas influence individuals or events or how individuals influence ideas or events. So remember, we're talking about human rights and we're talking about major people who were activists in the human rights movement and changing things for other people. So how were those people influencing the events and how were the events influencing those people? Next, we're gonna analyze how two or more authors writing about the same topic, share their presentations of key information by emphasizing different evidence or advancing different interpretations of facts. So this week we're gonna look at another woman who was a human rights activist, and we're gonna analyze how the author of Mother Jones presented their information, and how the author of the story we're reading about Harriet Tubman presented their information based on the same historical event and the historical time period that we're looking at. The objective that you guys will be working towards, this is what you will be doing by the end of the week. So the student will analyze two major human rights movements by comparison and contrast of influential people, including Mother Jones and Harriet Tubman, using a Venn diagram through Google Classroom. So we're going to do a practice Venn diagram today so that you understand how to do it. But when you get to the actual assignment, you're going to go into Google Classroom and there's going to be a simulated Venn diagram that looks a lot like this. So on one side, you'll put Harriet Tubman and on the other side, you'll put Mother Jones. Okay, and you're going to compare and contrast those two human rights activists based on your reading of Harriet Tubman this week and our reading of Mother Jones before school let out early for spring break. So today, what I want you to know is what you are expected to do for this week of distance learning. So because of your schedules, the days that you might have class and the days that you might turn things in are different from other periods and their schedules. And you will see that schedule that will come to you um, from Principal Leg. So be looking out for that. So the expectations for week one, your classwork. So every week in class, whether we're in the classroom or we're doing distance learning, you guys always know what your classwork is and what your homework is. It's always on the whiteboard over there. But for today, we're gonna have it here and I'm gonna post it into Google Classroom as well as an announcement or an email that will tell you exactly what you're expected to do. So for classwork on day one, whether your day one is Monday or whether your day one is Wednesday, this is what you will be doing on day one. Day one, you will read Harriet Tubman on page 34 of your study sink. Obviously, you don't have the book, so you're gonna go into Clever and you're gonna sign in through Clever to get to the McGraw-Hill Red app that we used before school got out, and you're going to go read the story about Harriet Tubman. You're gonna sign in the same way you would do on your Chromebook in the classroom. Once you read that, you need to complete the vocab quiz that's gonna be in Google Classroom. So there's about five to six uh, vocabulary words that you're going to read um, in your story and when you go back to Google Classroom there will be a quiz about what each of those words mean so if I were you when I was reading the story I would go through and highlight what those vocabulary words are maybe annotate that and then go look at definitions um, or look at how they're being used in the text because that's what the definition is going to be on your quiz in Google Classroom on day two, depending on what day two is for you and your schedule, you're going to fill in the Venn diagram using Mother Jones and Harriet Tubman. So the Venn diagram that we just talked about right here, you're going to be able to go in and edit this in Google Classroom once it's posted up there. But I haven't posted it yet because technically we're on spring break and I don't want you guys to be working on this right now. So on day two, you're going to fill in that diagram. So what I want you to do is to look at how Mother Jones is portrayed using her characteristics. Look at how Harriet Tubman is portrayed. Look at the different human rights movements that they're, they're talking about. Okay, We know Harriet Tubman had a lot to do with slavery and the Underground Railroad. Okay, We know that Mother Jones had a lot to do with child labor laws. Okay, And she worked with children, whereas Harriet Tubman was more focused on adults. Okay, So you want to compare the different types 
of human rights issues that were presented in those texts. Once you're done with that, you're going to answer the writing prompt. The writing prompt is already in Google Classroom. We went ahead and uploaded it before school got out in case we had to move into distance learning. So the writing prompt will ask you to look at Harriet Tubman and answer some questions based on your reading of the story. Okay? Your homework this week, so whether you do that during your class time because you have extra time or whether you do that, oh, or whether you do that after class time, okay? It just has to be turned in by Friday. So your homework is to watch The Giver. I will provide a link in Google Classroom where you will be able to click on the link and it will send you to a free showing of The Giver, okay? While you are watching that, you will be expected to answer the questions and submit those as an assignment. So these are the same questions that we were going to do in class before school got out. They're just in a digital version instead of writing them on paper, okay? So I would, if you need to pause the movie while you're watching it to answer your question, that might be a really good idea. But you have to make sure that the answers to the questions are submitted into Google Classroom because I'm looking for your answers, okay? So here's the thing. This is what you're expected to do, okay? Obviously, we're in distance learning, so I'm not there beside you making sure that you're doing it, and I can't help you per se as you get it done. You have until Friday to have all of this done. That's when your assignments are due, okay? So if you choose to spend day one and day two reading, that's fine. If you want to just read on those days, and then you want to spend the one day that you technically don't have this period, you want to spend that working on your assignments, that's fine, okay? It has to be turned in by Friday, okay? So there's a certain time. It'll be about 2.30 p.m. because that's when you would have to have your assignments turned in whether it was a regular week at school or not, okay? So by 2.30 p.m., you need to have your assignments turned in so that I can have them graded and we can be ready to start week two, okay? So today I want us to practice working on a Venn diagram. So for right now, while you're watching this video, I want you to take out a sheet of paper Take out a pencil, a pen, a marker, whatever you need to do to be able to draw a Venn diagram, okay? So we've been talking about human rights and we read about Mother Jones and this week we're reading about Harriet Tubman. So I want you to practice making a Venn diagram first, okay? So a Venn diagram is going to compare and contrast either two characters to things, to animals, maybe two versions of a story, whether it's the book version or the movie version, okay? But I want you to understand how Venn diagrams work first. So the first thing that you're gonna do is I'm gonna draw one big circle over here on the left-hand side. So go ahead and take your pencil or your pen and draw one big circle just like I did. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna draw one big circle over here on this side. Obviously, my circles aren't as pretty as the ones that are going to be online because those are perfect, okay? So now that you have your two circles, we need to talk about what each circle is for. So this left side circle is going to be for your character A. So who did we talk about first? We read about Mother Jones. So this circle will be for Mother Jones. I want you guys to practice this while I'm doing it so that you have a good idea before you get into the digital version. Okay, and now this week we're talking about Harriet Tubman. So on this side, you're going to write Harriet Tubman's name, and this circle will be devoted to things about her. Okay, so this side is specific to Mother Jones. This side is specific to Harriet Tubman. Now in the middle, this is where you're going to write your similarities. What is similar about the two of them? Okay. So this is an example about what you would do when you get here. You would write Mother Jones here, you would write Harriet Tubman here, you would write similarities there, okay? So now I want you to go back to the two circles that you drew. Okay, and today we're gonna practice doing this Venn diagram with characters from our story, The Giver, that we finished reading before school got out, okay? So here's my circle, here's my circle. On this side, we're gonna focus on the character of Jonas. And on this side, we're gonna focus on the character of the giver. Okay, so I want you to practice 
writing some different characteristics about these two people, okay? So now you can take some time if you want to go ahead and write down what you think is important about Jonas and what you think is important about the giver, okay? And what you think is similar between the two of them. So I'm going to give you about two to three minutes to go ahead and write some ideas that you have, okay? And then I'm going to show you what I would write if we were doing this as a class together, okay? So we know throughout the book that he gets chosen to be the giver, but for the most part, he's considered to be the receiver. So on this side, I'm going to write receiver because he is considered to be the receiver, okay? And then throughout most of the book, um, we're going to look at what he's like as far as physically, okay? He's young. He's eager to begin his training. So I'm going to write young, okay, and he's eager to learn at the beginning, okay? So these are some things about him, just three little short facts. He's considered to be the receiver, he's young as far as his physical nature, and he's eager, eager to learn about his job, okay? So next we're gonna move on to the giver, okay? For the most part of the book, he's the person chosen to train Jonas. So he is considered the trainer here. Okay, he's giving Jonas all that he needs in order to become the giver, okay? We could also say that looking at him and his physical attributes, he's old. He's not as young as Jonas. He's lived a very long life, okay? And when we think about him training Jonas and the way that he acts about it, you could say that maybe he's a little apprehensive. He's not as eager as Jonas is about this process. He's a little apprehensive about Jonas receiving these memories and about Jonas taking on this role. So we could say he's apprehensive to lose control, okay? So Jonas is eager to learn and the giver is apprehensive to lose control of his memories and what he's done. Okay, so now that we've separated the two characters, we separated Jonas from the giver, okay, we're going to think about how they could be alike. What could go in the middle? Okay, we know that both of them see flaws in their perfect community. So they are both aware of flaws in the community. And I'm going to shorten that because we don't have a lot of room here. But you will be able to expand yours in the digital version. Okay? And we know that they are the only ones with memories. Okay? We know that the giver has all the memories and he's transferring them to Jonas. But no one else in the story has any memories. So we're going to write, they have memories. Because that is the same across the board for both of them. So you want to make sure you're writing both of this as a practice while we're doing this together. Okay? And we also know that they both, because of the flaws that they see, they realize that a change should be made. So they both believe in change. So based on what we've talked about as far as human rights and the human rights movement, you could call Jonas and the giver an activist. They are considered activists, okay? They see a problem and they want to change it. They want to act on it. They want to do something to fix the problem, okay? So we've talked about the difference between pacifists and activists, and we could consider Jonas and the giver activists, okay? So this is your example about how to make a Venn diagram, okay? So we just did this together, but whenever you go into Google Classroom, you're gonna do this on your own, okay? And you're gonna have to submit it as an assignment. So be sure that you have both of the characters' names, so you're gonna have Harriet Tubman, and you're going to have Mother Jones, okay? And be sure that you are analyzing the characters, analyzing what the, the human rights movement is about, okay? Remember, overall, we're trying to answer the essential question. 
why it is essential to defend human rights, okay? We talked a lot about human rights before we left and what the different types of human rights are and why it's important that these people fought for change, okay? How does that affect you today? How does that affect your kids in the future? How does that affect me as a teacher, okay? Because of their work, what has that done for us? So think about that, okay? So let's review what our expectations were before we get off for the day. Okay, so make sure that you read the story, that you do the vocab quiz, that you fill in the Venn diagram based on the example that we just did, and you answer the writing prompt, okay? As far as your homework, you need to watch the giver and answer the questions. And remember, we're tying this back to being able to analyze two human rights movements activists, okay? So, that's all that we have for today. So, I hope that you guys um, do well as far as getting your work done. Remember, if you have any questions, our Google Hangout will be Friday mornings so that you can get on and ask me a question about anything that you need to have clarified before you turn your assignments in at 2.30, okay? See you guys all online.